Hi, everybody. This is Mike Belzano, publisher of R&R, Restoration and Remediation Magazine, and the Experience Events. Welcome to episode 15 of Trade Talks, Unlocking the Experience. We had a very special guest. I say this every week, but you know what? They're all very <laughs> special guests. I'm really proud of who we got this week, especially. The gentleman who's joining us is an accredited carpet cleaning technician, a certified senior carpet inspector, a floor covering specialist, a cleaning specialist, a business owner, a manager, an author, very much like me, a very proud native Ohioan, a, a Buckeye. Yeah. <laughs> he has more accreditations than I could list. Yeah, he was a member of the IICRC Board of Directors, was a president of the United Carpet Cleaners. But most of you know him as the owner, current owner of Violin Flooring Inspections. Please welcome Mr. Mark Violin. Welcome, Mark. Hello, Michael. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it so much, this opportunity. And thanks for coming. Um, we appreciate it. We, we, you know, we were so excited you're taking a big role in our event coming up in Chattanooga. Uh, and I really wanted to get yeah. a chance to know you. And the people, people, industry people know, uh, know of you already, of course. But I mean, this show is always meant to kind of dig in and talk to some, some people. And it's just great to have you here. So thank you again. Well, Michael, it's it's really my honor, and it was um, to be tapped when when I got a message from Lisa Wagner, rug chick, yep. and uh, also part of the message was uh, with Jim Pemberton, and asking me if I would share some presentations at the upcoming experience, and I I go really. Sure. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, and, and she was talking about some of the things to, to want to present that are up my right up my alley. You know, the things that I do. It's perfect. I uh, yeah, Lisa, you know, I beat a dead horse on this. I'll I'll make it quick. I I I've come from a media publishing background, not a yeah. not a cleaning expert or restoration expert. And I said, we need to get some experts in here to do this. And Lisa agreed to help on the cleaning side. And she goes, I want Jim. And I want Mark. I go, you got it. Go for it. Now, we were happy that both of you agreed to, to say yes. But let, let's go back. You you started your the first floor covering business. You started in 1977. I, I don't want people to do the math and figure out how old you are. But I mean, <laughs> how old were you then? How old were you when you, when you got to that business? <laughs> yeah, let's, say, let's just say that I had more hair than brains at the time. Uh, <laughs> I was 19. Wow, that's great. But you want to go back a little bit? You want to go back a little bit further? Sure. Summer between my sixth and seventh grade in grade school. I was asked by the custodians of the school that I was going to. My mom worked there in the cafeteria and very involved in the in the parish and, and, and school itself. And they needed a helper. And I learned how to scrub and wax floors when I was in sixth grade. That's amazing. So and, then, and you know, who'd have thought? that here I am in this industry so many years later, I, I remember the first carpet that I cleaned and I was running a shampooer, the blue luster machine <laughs> cleaning right, the carpet. Right. And after I, after I shampooed the carpet, I go, do we put wax on this now? <laughs> well, lo and behold, no, you don't use wax. No. You use floor polymers. <laughs> Oh my goodness! That's amazing. Yeah. Well, you're but you're a kid. You're a kid. You're just starting out. And again, it's look at where it's making. at. Where it's taking you. I mean, do you think that it was it? Did did you, you must have enjoyed it? I mean, it must have been a passion to get well, you into the uh, industry. I, you know, I was making fifty cents an hour. What yeah. you know, and also you know, mowing lawns in the neighborhood and shoveling snow because I live in Northeast Ohio. Yep. yep. Um, we get snow, and that was that's what I did to make money. And that's what kids could do, I guess, right. at that time. But but moving on from that, just launching from that as a kid, and then learning how to hang siding and put roofs on, and you know, the, to make money. That's what that's what kids did. But then you know, as I moved on in the in the career, well, just to say that high school and I did not get along. Um, thank goodness Mr. Blaumeister gave me a D instead of an F in algebra that I even graduated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after that, I went into the industry, into industry and I'm very, you know, I'm a tactile learner. I'm a visual learner. And I was working for a company that made plastic parts for automobiles and medical devices and 
toys, the big wheel, the right. big wheel. Yep. I worked in a facility that, and I was, I would have you say the technician, uh, millwright in, in a sense, to make sure that those machines kept making the parts properly. Mm-hmm. So I'm mechanically minded and that's, that's what I did. Well, it came a time, you know, it was obviously a dead end job in a sense. Um, some could move on with that, but I had a brother who was quite the entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna be, Namely, I'm, I'm gonna Chuck. ask about him. Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> I'm familiar. Namely Chuck. Yeah. And you know, we still live 20 minutes away from each other, 20 minutes from where we grew up. We never left the county. And you know, that's the violent siblings that that together get together on a regular basis. But I, you know, Chuck was you know, starting this business, he had a decorating business, painting and and things of that sort. And he had a good friend, neighbor, that uh, back in the 70s, uh, late 70s, there was a huge recession going on. And it was very inexpensive to get into the carpet cleaning business. Mm -hmm. Here's an extractor that held seven gallons of water. And here's the emulsifier. And here's this traffic lane cleaner. And go out and clean carpet. And Chuck tapped my shoulder. He goes, what do you think? And he started talking about things and I knew where I was going, not much of anywhere. And here I am today. You know, we got, we were in business together and I, I did everything that had to do with carpet and other floor coverings for our business. Village seen, carpet care systems. Yeah, yeah. It's in, and and you, you were with that. You had that going till all the way to ninety four from seventy seven. A great right. run. So Chuck. Right. So basically, Chuck was um, kind of the business manager. He was on the yeah. He was on the business side. We we both had to sell. And you were in operations. You you were, you were I was in operations, but right. I, I had you know I yes I brought you know wore a suit coat and a tie. Yep. yep. But then many times I had to play Superman because off it comes because. A job came in that had to be done quickly or a water loss or, you know, something like that. So, sorry, I can't make sales calls today. I have to go. <laughs> I have to do the reason we're making, we have this business now. Yeah. No more right. marketing for a day, please. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yep. I get it completely. And, yeah. and you now, but you did that for a long time and then you, you eventually transitioned to becoming a uh, inspector. Well, and that was that's something that also piggybacked with my involvement with the IICRC. It was actually IICUC when I joined the board of directors back in 1987. And, you know, I started having, I got my, some of the credentials, CCT, RRT, and, and things of that sort, and joined the, the board of directors as the representative for the United Carpet Cleaners Institute, which is a regional association. And I followed... President John Downey of the association, and eventually uh, the UCCI merged with the Society of Cleaning and Restoration Technicians. But at that time, Michael, there was um, in the in the 90s, and everybody was was talking about, oh, Mark, you got to become a carpet inspector. You got to become a carpet inspector. I go, an inspector for what? Right. And you know, they were talking about this. Well, I got my credential in 1992 from Ed York, who founded the IICUC and Society of Cleaning and Restoration Tech and other organizations. He was a wonderful guy. You know, sometimes people call him the curmudgeon and, you know, horses, patootie. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was ahead of his game in, in that time. And so many other people followed suit, like Lee Pemberton and Jeff Bishop. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so many other people, you know, bought into the idea of, the IICRC is what it is today. And I got my credential in doing carpet inspection because my reputation was already starting to precede me. This is the geeky guy. He can help us troubleshoot what's going on with this carpet. So even before I had my credential, I was inspecting carpets. But after that, it just took off. That's amazing. And then in 95, yeah, yes. it, it, then, you know, after I, Chuck and I parted ways in 94, you know, I was out driving around doing inspections and listening to these cassette tapes that my mm-hmm. late father-in-law shared with me about sales and marketing. And, and I was listening to an Earl Nightingale cassette. Right. And he goes, get yourself a piece of paper and start writing down your goals. And one of my goals was, I want to get paid for my knowledge. 
seriously, the very next day, I got a phone call from Lee Pemberton. Really? Mark, would you become one of my instructors? Who can say no to that? <laughs> no, he was a legend. He is a legend in the industry yes. for sure. And I think that I'm a big fan of goal making too and writing them down. And that's what you did. That's a yeah. big thing people forget about with goals. Write them down, make them part yeah. of your your and, they, and I'm not, I don't, I don't think that was accidental, Mark. I mean, I think you no. kind of it's, it's kind of alluded to that. That wasn't, didn't just happen. I mean, you made it happen right. and, and and made positive thinking work and that's great. And then yeah. you, know, you were doing that. You were, you were running, you also were running DNR carpet service for a long time. You had a lot of balls in the air, I guess is what I'm, I'm about to say. And well, there was, yeah, the part of the industry, you know, what the industry was tanking in, right. in the, you know, 2005 ish time, the huge, another recession hitting. And insect inspections were were dropping, so was instruction dropping. And I was doing an inspection. I've known the owners of of DNR Carpet Service Commercial Flooring for years, even before then, and did an inspection for them. And one of the owners was talking about how the business was growing here and here and here. And one of the things that they wanted to get started was a maintenance division. Mm -hmm. And I go, you need to hire me. So they did. <laughs> So I started the maintenance division for them. I, I think I don't think they just yeah they the they, your reputation preceded itself. It sounds like it by that time. But it sounded like you were doing this for a year and a half. That was a long a lot a lot of reputation by then of excellence. You were you, know, you started with carpet, of course, as we mentioned, and then you're doing all floor coverings. You know what are the, what are, what are some of the main? I mean, there's an obvious one, but I bet you can come up with a great answer for what are some of the main reasons one would need to hire a flooring inspector. Besides the, the, the easy, easy, obvious one. Go ahead. Even on my website, I say, why do people hire an inspector? Because somebody isn't giving them the answers they deserve. People keep on deflecting, saying it's not our fault, not our fault, not our fault. And when there are answers to why installations of any type of floor covering fail, the product fails, care and maintenance, installation fills, there's an answer out there. And that's where I get called in. I'm asked to answer a question. Mm -hmm. And, you know, questions to be answered when the Gundarina first opened up in Cleveland and then mm -hmm. the Browns Training Center, you know, put an addition on. There's a problem. What is it? Help us figure it out. And that's what I get called in to, to do. Well, you just, as again, I'm a native Northeast Ohio, and as well, you just mentioned a couple of buildings that uh, piqued my interest. So, which adds a question yeah. I wasn't thinking going to ask, what are some of the big projects you've worked on that you could discuss with us that people might know? Like that, 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 that I know those two. <laughs> for well, sure. yeah, well, the Dunderina is now the Rocket Field. <laughs> right. What's it called? Field Rocket house Mortgage Fieldhouse now. There you go, where the Cleveland Cavaliers play. And they are a hot team right now. They're on fire, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, other places, you know, just sharing. I get called in by the Baltimore Convention Center. Why do you need to hire me? Well, they have a staff that is using very good equipment. They want to find a way to increase productivity. How can I do that? So I point out things. How can I make spot removal, removal easier from a standing position? Because they're getting down on their hands and knees and working on it. And these are some older people. Right. And we, we both know that the more muscles you use, the more tired you're going to become. Mm -hmm. I did some consulting with progressive insurance. And now I just, like I was just saying, I just scheduled some classes for the University of Richmond. That's great. They want to teach their staff I, to help make their jobs easier. And other, you know, assisted living centers, some of the, the high-end uh, assisted living centers throughout the country uh, are looking for some training just to help teach their staff how to maintain carpet to get the longest, best-looking life out of it. It strikes me, and we've only been talking for about 15 minutes, but I, you know, the, the, you start out with Chuck running the the marketing and, and things like that, and you yeah. just getting down doing that. But you you just kept kept learning, and I'm a, again a big believer in that. You continue <laughs> to learn, and now you're running everything now. You're getting calls from people you never expected. And it's, I, I, I would think this is more of a, not really a question, more of a statement. It's because of that, because you kept learning and kept trying to, to hone your craft, and now look where you're at with, with these, these huge convention centers calling you. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, one of the things, you know, where does a person get the knowledge? And 
right now, uh, I even had a student in my in the class not too long ago say, why are you taking this class? You know, you always want to interview your students. You know, what are you coming to learn? And he says, I'm done with YouTube University. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to know how to do it the proper way. Yeah. Okay. Let me show you some things that are going to help make your job easier. But the other, but the other things, um, I just had a brain fade. Sorry. That's okay. Let me, let me ask you one question. I want, I definitely want to ask you. <laughs> All right. Has your work as an inspector helped uh, hone your craft as a cleaning specialist? I mean, you think when you went away from oh. just being a cleaning specialist, being an inspector, now that you're really inspecting yeah. things, has that helped you make a better cleaning specialist? Well, and that's and, and you're you're tossing out there a, a word that tied into the the thought that I had. Where did I start? Mm. And that was with the magazines that were available at the time. And who did I learn from locally? That with the United Carpet Cleaners Institute. But truth be known. The Installation Cleaning Specialist magazine, which predates <laughs> many of the publications that are still used today. Wow. And then John Downey launched Clean Facts magazine mm -hmm. and had all of these wonderful articles in there. And I'm the geek. And there are some articles in it that I had to read aloud in a period of time just to digest the information that was being shared in those articles. But that's how I learned. And I learned by doing. And that's why I teach the same way. Yeah, you know, the the different publications that are available to us today, the digital media yeah. that's available to us, there there is there's there's more than what one can actually absorb. I you'd have you have no time to do your work because there's so much available, you know, with R and R. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's and all the different, yeah. It's sometimes it, I know that I, I of course jaded because I'm on that side of the fence, but as a, sure. a, a person, a citizen, it gets overwhelming sometimes with the internet growing as much as it is that you you on one hand you're never in the lack of information or answers to your questions. On the other hand, it can be a little intimidating with all everything, which is the right way to go, right? Well, and being that, like you said, I'm I'm a writer and I don't write books. I write articles mm -hmm. and I write articles the way that I see it. These are the things that I see as a flooring inspector, why installations fail, why cleaners have difficulty getting things cleaned, why lots of different luxury vinyl, that's going to be part right. of in the pavilion at the, ex, at the experience that's coming up and to talk about how to get them clean, not just from the, from the residential side, but commercial side and how to get them clean safely. At the National Institute of Certified Floor Covering Inspectors Conference, the NICFI, who is a shareholder with the IICRC, and I'm their representative mm -hmm. uh, on their board of directors. But we had at our conference last October about floor safety, and a representative from the National Floor Safety Institute was there and talking about the different detergents that people use on their floors that can actually make them slipperier after using the product, mm. believe it or not, because of the chemistry. Yeah, you, you and those just... are the type of articles. Yeah, so yeah. that's the direction I go. Those are the things that I point out to my audience who's reading my articles. You know, these are some of the things that you need to keep an eye out for. This is some of the stuff you could hear Mark talk about at the experience, which is coming up April 3rd through the 5th at the Chattanooga Convention Center in Chattanooga. And you mentioned, uh, you, please, was, was, we, we get booths for sale. We You definitely can sign up. We're still having the Shaw Tour. You can tour Shaw Flooring Plants the day before on April 2nd, too. There's still about, about 20, 25 seats available for that as of uh, this recording. So go to rnrmagonline.com to register. You, you mentioned a couple of things, but now what are you... What you have a big presence at this event this year. I'm so proud of that. That you have such a big presence. What do you what do you plan on presenting to everybody? Basic carpet repair skills. Things that you know, I, I'm gonna turn around here. I'm in, I'm in my classroom and I'm going to pull out my pouch. What kind of tools can fit in this pouch? Well, a couple of knives, maybe some duckbill scissors. And one thing that you don't see, it would be a hot melt glue gun. What kind of repairs can you do with just the tools in this pouch? So you can get started with just a couple of hundred dollars, or if you really want to get involved in cleaning or 
reinstallation, installation of carpet. Now you're going to start talking about thousands because we need a power stretcher and a knee kicker and hot melt seaming iron. But Michael, there's a lot of money that people pass up cleaners that one cleaner said in my, in my class one time, he says, I'm tired of walking over money. Uh, that's a great quote. That's a great quote. And that's, yeah. it sounds like you're going to be people that are going to come to this event and get their money's worth listening to you alone. If they show up they with these tips. Can, they can, yeah, they're going to go away and instantly be able to make repairs in carpet. You're speaking on, of course, we're known, this event is known for its hands-on uh, demonstrations yeah. and all of day two is going to be hands-on, but also you're going to be doing some presentations at our uh, famous cleaning pavilion. Uh, anything, yeah. anything different going on there with uh, Mr. Bissi? Well, one of the, one of the things that, that Lisa has up her sleeve is fiber identification. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? And for Lisa, that is such a passion of hers because she's got to know what, these rugs are made out of because if she cleans it improperly, there's going to be a lot of hurt. Well, cleaners need to know about this too. Every cleaner needs to know. And of course, you can look at some carpet and say, oh, that's nylon. Oh, that's polyester. Oh, that's olefin. You know, things like that. Yeah, I get that. But you know what? There's some things that are coming down the road that are changing and right. you need to be on the lookout. But why, when I clean this carpet, Last week, this off-white cut pile carpet, it cleaned up beautifully. But the one I just cleaned yesterday, I could hardly get it clean. Why, Mark? Did you do a fiber ID? Well, no. If you'd have done a fiber ID, I could probably give you more information why you might have had difficulty getting that clean. And they need to know, ask, they need to, know to ask the right questions, correct? And right. that's where we find out right. with you. Okay, I get it. Yeah. I get it completely. What do you, why, why besides... Tell us something people would be surprised to find out about you. You seem like you're such a good guy, man. I'm going to put you on the spot with this one. <laughs> well, this goes this goes way back. I was in a demolition derby. Really? <laughs> I was I came novice. in third. I was the, I was the novice. And the only reason I I got knocked out is because the battery died <laughs> from having to restart it all the time. That, where, so that oh, was a crazy thing up in ohio you did that yeah at the stark county fairground i love it i love it <laughs> i here's what we got lisa lavender owned an arena football league team mark violin yes. finished third in a demolition derby I mean, every week I, I love this industry we peel the onion away and there's so many great stories yeah. for everybody <laughs> it's all fantastic yeah you, yeah did you do it at just that one time or more than that? Oh yeah, that it was it was a car that was given to my late wife and I that, from our uncle. Is he had no more use? Well, we ran it for a number of more years, and then it it just it was time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> time to get rid of the car. And no better way to have that car end its life, but entering it. It was a it was an Oldsmobile Delta eighty eight. It right. was a beast of a car. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> That's and my my oldest daughter, who is also my protege, Jessica, and she was sitting on you know Maggie's lap and started crying. Oh, daddy! <laughs> no, that's that's my baby, right? Exactly. And you, to be yeah, doing that, <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, Mark, what is what is what is the main reason, in your opinion, now you think people should come down to Chattanooga to to see our show? There's more information than you can shake a stick at. What, what's your passion? What are some of the things that you still want to learn in the industry? You're not coming that you don't know anything about the industry. Maybe you are, because I've had students that don't even own equipment, but they want to learn how to clean carpet before they go buy the equipment so they get the right things. Maybe you're one of those people too. This isn't just about cleaning. This isn't just about restoration. This is about relationships and finding the people that are going to work best with you to help you succeed in your business. That's fantastic. And that's a, that, that sounds to me like a good way to end this conversation. <laughs> that's a perfect. Please make plans uh, to attend the experience on April 3rd to the 5th in uh, lovely Chattanooga, Tennessee. You can register through our website, rnrmagonline.com. You can still also get tickets for that Shaw tour plant on April 2nd. We're going to tour three plants just down the street. You can find this and all R&R &R videos and podcasts on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. 
Please follow us if you haven't already and feel free to leave a quick review. We'd love to hear from you. Also, please follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. A very uh, special thank you to our guest today, the one and only Mr. Mark Violin. This is Trade Talks, Unlocking the Experience. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Michael. Thank you so much.